Hi, this is Shane Davis. I want to tell you about my longtime friend Bob, or Robert Ginn, as he is formally known. Among many things, Bob became famous as a painter. Articles have been written about him. He has written and illustrated books about his paintings and theories. His style resembles the Group of Seven. Bob has traveled extensively in B.C. as well as the rest of the world. Locally, Bob did a series of logging paintings for Doman Industries. His paintings have been illustrated on greeting cards. If Bob excels at paintings, just imagine that he has created documentaries for television, run excursion boats, and raised a great family. It was well over 25 years ago when I first met Robert Ginn. He is known as Robert, or Ginn, but I was introduced to him as Bob, and this name has stuck with me. Among the many things which Bob and I have in common is our love for great cars. Not only has Bob painted cars, but he also owns several very desirable ones. One such car is his 1938 Bentley four and a quarter liter saloon with coachwork by Freeston and Webb. This car is known as the top hat design and is unique with its chromium plated instrument panel. Bob is a keen photographer and also a dog lover. When I arrived with my maroon Bentley, we both photographed our two Bentleys together. His dog, Emily, seemed just as photogenic as the cars and as Bob himself. Pig got up and walked away. Our mutual friend, Merv, did not want to feel ignored, so he posed with the cars, too. After a bad hair day, we tried again. With the two cars side by side, it was fascinating to see the styling changes after 15 years of development. Both these Bentleys have hand-built aluminum coachwork. No question about it, mine looks dated. Our evening together had only just begun. Soon we were at the marina in anticipation of a special experience. We were to have a sail in Bob's family heirloom. It was a warm July evening. The sun was in descent, and the clouds reflected their colors and shapes in the slightly rippled waters. Bob's boat is known as Miss Reveler. It is a 26-foot-long open launch with a plumb bow, or vertical bow. This boat originally belonged to Bob's uncle, and Bob fondly remembers in his youth plying the waters off Cordova Bay in Victoria. Over the last several years, Miss Reveler has been lovingly brought back to good health and is now in very fine working order. The ideal thing would be if somebody was to just let it drift towards the float and bump up against that green line there. You're off. No, off, off, off. No, don't push us out. Leaving port was a finely choreographed delight, with the skipper and crew working in perfect harmony. It was great to see the catwalk demonstrated to perfection. Hey, I 
Once underway, we could all enjoy the pleasures of such a fine example of marine history. This boat reminded me of the stories told about rum runners off the east and west coasts of Canada during the years of Prohibition. It seems that rum running was much more a romantic pastime than a shady illegal occupation. As you can see, Miss Reveller has not had a complete restoration where all the bits and pieces are stripped and cleaned or remanufactured. Most components still have their original history and have just been serviced to work efficiently but still retain their aged appearance. And they're filled up with uh mostly uh, starlings, but also cormorants. And now a word about Emily. Emily is Bob's family dog, and she accompanies Bob everywhere he goes. Being an Airedale, she exudes as much character as her master. Emily is named after our famous BC painter Emily Carr. Bob remembers seeing Emily Carr briefly many, many years ago, and she subsequently influenced Bob's perception of the world. This perception is echoed in his painting. For landlubbers, an evening sail is a revelation. It is fun to see and be seen. The setting sun adds another dimension to one's enjoyment of the cruise. We have an ever-changing view of marine-related activities and seaside developments. The changing light alters the reflections in the water as we pass. there and in the spring here we get uh, gray whales, three of them, a big yellow ochre one with a lot of barnacles, a gray one and a kind of a pink one that's smaller than the other two. Looks like a, a, a parent's a teenager. A passing train is headed south with a valuable shipment. The sounds add yet another dimension to the evening.
audio remote on here. Yeah, well. Ah, shoot the sunset through that the telephone array. Emily is suffering a dog's life. This is no ordinary dog's life. It is Bob's dog's life. I wonder what Emily is thinking. Excitement. Extraordinary excitement. Everything from the panoramic to the smallest detail is intriguing. With the changes of weather, time, and light, there is never-ending interest. Being a passenger, and an appreciative passenger, was a great pleasure. I enjoyed just relaxing, drinking in the delights of the evening, and pondering the beauties of nature. I've got a gun in my pocket and I'm extremely fond of it. Yeah. Sometimes you've got to take the bull by the big suckers. In one of Bob's books, he mentions a high school essay where he quotes Robert Louis Stevenson. The world is so full of a number of things that I am sure we should all be as happy as kings. I think with Bob that he has achieved that happiness. Another cruise is coming to an end. Another evening is coming to an end. Miss Reveller, as so often in the past, has had another successful run. Each time Bob and I meet, there is something new and meaningful to do. This evening illustrates the varied life which Bob has carved for himself. Bob is an individualist in a world filled with too many mediocre experiences. I am grateful for Bob's influence and colorful activities. <laughs> 